So you mentioned before that you're interested in kind of using or, or uh, you know, fiction to convey or to communicate an idea, to convey, to communicate something uh, more abstract. Um, so say more about that, because, you know, uh, most of the time that objectivists have tried to write fiction, um, it, it, it's, the story is, the writing is terrible, the story is blah, but they get all the speeches in, you know, and, and, and they're hitting you over the head with objectivism. How do you find the balance and what kind of ideas do you think, uh, uh, you know, unless you're Ayn Rand, right? But what kind of ideas do you think you can convey in a, in a, in a thriller, in a, in a whodunit type story? Well, yeah. So, I mean, one thing I'll definitely stress is my goal certainly wasn't to sell objectivism with the book. My, my, now I didn't, think that selling objectivism is irrelevant to writing the book. I think the best thing I could do to sell objectivism would to become famous as a, as a good fiction writer and have that huge platform from which to talk about my ideas and, you know, promote nonfiction works. So I don't think that they're conflicting goals, but um, my goal certainly wasn't to spread objectivism, but look, I mean, you know me, you're on the only thing I'm really interested in is philosophy uh, or other issues insofar as I can relate them to philosophy and so there was no way there wasn't going to be philosophy in the book. But I mean, look, I really took seriously who is this character and that there's, there's no way that just some like college girl discovered objectivism, right, is going to go around preaching it. And I, I just thought it would have been really inauthentic to the world to have it at that level. But I do think there are ideas that I agree with that objectivism agrees with um, that are more accessible and the kind of thing that an honest person would come to on their own. And certainly if you think in the crime genre, you're dealing pretty much with, um, let's call it like more evident kinds of values, not so much the conflicts of individualism versus collectivism, uh, or reason versus mysticism, but good versus evil and having a sense of what it means to be good and, and how people corrupt their souls. And there's a lot of kind of conventional or semi-conventional wisdom, I think, that is, you know, on the right track. I mean, if you just take something like the virtue of justice or the virtue of honesty, objectivism shines a much greater, deeper light on what those mean. But most people regard them as virtues. And I think you can bring that out in a, in a novel like this. And I certainly um, tried to bring them out. And, uh, and certainly a lot of psychology that's informed about objectivism is going to inform my characters like my understanding of, you know, um, how a person goes bad and the kind of trajectory that evasion like leads and the kind of logic of evasion, I think is very much sort of um, in the back of my mind, but even comes out in the novel. So there's ideas in the novel. Um, it is a, look, it's really challenging to integrate plot and theme. And the, I mean, Ayn Rand, one of their underappreciated insights was what she called a plot theme, yep. um, which is not just a summary of your plot. It's a one sentence summary of your plot that embodies a, an abstract theme. And it's only by having that, you know, plot theme, for example, in Atlas Shrugged, you know, the theme, the abstract idea is the role of the mind in human life. But the plot theme is the mind on strike, the men of the mind going on strike. And that plot theme you can see translates directly into this abstract idea. And it's that plot theme that allows her to select the characters, the events, and so on. And I think that's the only way that you can really um, figure out how to actually embody ideas and not just make it characters mouthing ideas. Um, it's a really tricky thing. And you know that's why I say like uh, with, a, with a thriller or any genre of fiction, with the possible exception of fantasy and science fiction, where I think you can do more with ideas. Um, Ayn Rand in bootleg romanticism said that thrillers, the theme is always good versus evil. I would put it a little bit more. It's um, good versus evil with life or death stakes. And so you're dealing with almost a perceptual level form of good versus evil, right? Like two, he is evil, but he never mm -hmm. physically assaults anybody. Right. Um, and so it, it's very hard for people to get, why is he evil? What, like he doesn't yeah. even seem evil at the beginning, but 
you know, a character who plants a bomb in New York City, we can all see, okay, that's evil. Like you don't have to know much more than that. So you can deal with moral issues, I think, at a at a um, level that has to bring in less philosophy. To what extent do you have a plot theme worked out before you write? When when does the plot theme come into consciousness? I'm constantly going back and forth on it. With this new book, it was more clear cut in my mind because I, I had more context and I had learned a lot. With the last one, I would just constantly um, throw stuff into a draft and then go, wait, what the heck am I really trying to say? And, you know, it was uh, it, it was a very messy sort of process, but that's fine. Um, the key is that you need to know by the end of the process what it is. It's just very helpful to know it at the beginning of the process. Um, but yeah, that, that took me a long while to get clear on. And I would say probably it was only halfway through the book that I got, all right, what I'm, I'm really trying to illustrate something about justice, which Mm -hmm. shouldn't have been a big surprise to me given the name of my character, but, uh, it, it, uh, it actually was. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran book show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.